Alrighty. Well, I'm gonna play some Minecraft after I stop browsing Twitter. And the reason I'm doing that is because today I wanted to talk about um, my favorite show slash shows. Or not my favorite in the world, but like up there with my favorite. And I just had some time and I have kind of had a bit of creative burnout because of my last video it took me forever but <coughs> basically my plan is is I want to oh, look at that weird discord thing in the top left corner that's really odd anyway so I'm gonna do some mining today and I'm, basically I kind of want to discuss the differences between Pablo Escobar and uh, Miguel Felix Gardo because I think that they're kind of interesting case studies on how shows make villains, you know? Because Narcos is not like the normal show, right? Instead of showing a bad guy and a good guy, in the traditional sense, it has a bad guy and a good guy in the non in like kind of like the Breaking Bad sense. Like the thing is with Breaking Bad is, um, Walter is the good guy and the bad guy, right? Because you're rooting for him. He's 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 like some poor, uh, poor guy who's had a horrible, like sad life, and who you kind of feel sympathetic for. But when finally he reaches the edge, and he learns that he has cancer, he decides to. With no other way to provide for his family, he decides that he wants to make a change, and that change involves uh, cooking meth and dealing drugs. Which is kind of a. The reason why Breaking Bad was so crazy good was because that kind of thing had never really been explored before, except for like. I've never seen the movie, but except for uh, Taxi Driver, I've never seen that movie. Apparently, they did that. And like The Joker, those are two examples of other anti heroes. That's why I think that the Narcos shows. Uh, that's why I think that they're so awesome. It's because the anti-hero is not like an overused thing. It's, it's more so like it, I can't really think of a show where it's bad with an anti-hero. And the original Narcos, uh, just Narcos with Pablo Escobar. Narcos Mexico is about them catching Pablo Escobar. But it, it, not only it shows you the view of the DEA trying to catch him, but it also shows you the view of Pablo Escobar and what kind of person he is. And, and it's interesting because over time, um, you know, I was watching a video recently and it talked about the differences, the, the reasoning behind, like the psychology behind why people like an anti-hero. And it's like, the reason why the anti-hero is such a popular, or is such a, how do I say it, not a popular way, because it's not used very much, but it's such a successful way to um, convey a character and have, have a character build arcs and stuff around them, is because with an anti-hero, there's always, there's always two paths, so see right here, there's the path of good, where there will de there's the path of redemption, where the 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 path that they're taking is all bad. They're they're a bad guy. They're going to bad places. But just for an example, the squid piece of squid here is the good aspects. So it's mostly bad, but there are these elements of humanism, or there's these elements of of human likeness and good inside of them. There always has to be that for an anti-hero to work as a character. And that makes the audience resonate with them. They're like, oh, that they can forgive all the bad things that they do just because they know that near the end, this gives them the bigger chance to go with the, the redemption sidetrack or the redemption, the redemption fork path, you know, whatever. But on the other hand, it goes to redemption or it will go to self-destruction where the end of the road is not pleasant, everything falls apart, they die or whatever. It's, it, it, and 
every and that's what keeps you on the edge of your seat that's what gives you like they don't need cliffhangers at the ends of the episode because you always want to see want to see when this fork happens and when they go to the rede either the redemption arc or the self-destruction arc and that's why i wanted to kind of talk about this in a video uh, for one i haven't made a video in a while and two i've always been interested in filmmaking and this kind of stuff and i'm not scripted or anything this isn't scripted but i just kind of wanted to just kind of rant i guess you could say this is a rant and talk about these two characters because they're both anti-heroes right they're both bad guys pablo escobar certain aspects of him are he's the bad guy he's he, he grew up in colombia poor and learned to make money off of the uh, being an opportunist, he learned to make money off of the drug trade and eventually be got billions from it. But over time, obviously what the drug, tra drug trade does to all, most people, or all people, I should say, is it tarnish, it, it turns them into a, a, like basically this, this crime lord, the bad guy. But he has like a family and he's good to them and he loves people and he's fair and he's not entirely crazy he just wants the love of his country and he wants the love of his family and he and he protect his family but he hate but he's like a he's like he's like he's the kind of guy where if he's not your friend you do not want him as your enemy that kind of thing where he's so powerful that, like, if he was your friend, he'd be the bestest friend you've ever had. But if he was your enemy, you'd not live a single day after, afterwards meeting him. Compared to Miguel Felix Gallardo, or I, I'm just going to call him Miguel, where he is, he, instead of starting off kind of bad, like Pablo does, where he's just like, oh, I just kind of want to, you know, uh, make all the money I can and kill all the people I want. Um, he doesn't, the thing was with Pablo is that he doesn't really start off with morals, but, or not, at least not morals that you see, but with Miguel, he definitely starts off with morals. He's a cop, uh, he's defending his family, his, his, Rafa is his cousin, I can't remember, but it, basically he's protecting his, his friend, I'm just gonna call him his friend, don't quote me, but Rafa is like his second-hand man who's trying to create a, a weed um, what do you call it a weed strain that's gonna be the best and he has a plan like he's a cop he's a good guy but he has a plan he knows what he's gonna do he's been poor his whole life and he's just like okay I'm gonna try and make it for myself so that's what happens he goes to the Sinaloan bosses and he's like, hey, Mr. Lion, um, I'm going to try and go and get those brothers to join us. And he does that, kills the brothers, and so on and so on and so on. But the thing is, is he deteriorates over time. You can see the deterioration. With Pablo, it just, he gets more power and he never really changes. He's kind of like the same guy. He's just kind of like a, a smart, powerful kind of guy who gets, who has, uh, who's very emotional. He, he relies a lot on a lot on emotion compared to Miguel, who's a bit smarter than that. He doesn't really rely on emotion. He relies on ruthlessness as time goes on. He goes from he goes from um, almost like you know he starts at this good path, and then slowly he drifts down the dark tunnel into stabbing everybody he who is his friend in the back, even though he doesn't consider them his friends at that time. It's this weird, cruel kind of... It's a difference. But it's two different complete case studies. Even though they're like the same aspects. like the, It's like the same kind of premise of a show. Oh, you got Big Bad... D, you got Big Bad Pablo Escobar, most powerful, richest man in the world. Then you got... Miguel Felix Gerardo, who's like the the big kind of uh, ring all the bosses around. They all listen to him, and he's kind of just like they're both relatively the same. They're both about drugs. They're both about power and money. But the thing is with with Pablo, 
is he starts out with honor and he kind of keeps it. When Miguel starts out with honor and slowly loses sight of why it's important to him, which leads to him stabbing all of his friends in the back, betraying them, um, which leads to his downfall. Now, the thing is, is like I said earlier, when you want to make an anti-hero as a filmmaker, you always have a path, a path that they follow. They're a bad guy, but they have to have human aspects that make you sympathize with them. Things that, that make them seem human, humanizing facts. And as they walk the path, you're like, okay, this, this is a guy I'm on the side of. I don't, I, I can look past the things, the bad things that he's done to see him turn out good in the end. And these are both stories, and as most of the anti-hero stories end, they normally end with self-destruction instead of redemption. And they're both examples of how they both ended in destruction. Uh, Pablo's being just kind of the emotional craze at the end where he wants to free his family. He has all these um, aspirations that he wants to complete when he has no money and he's poor and or he's running out of money and he doesn't have any power anymore and he's being taken over. But basically, with Miguel, he's he never really... He always has money. He always has power. But... When he, what he needs are good friends and good partners that will tr that he can trust to basically help him. And as time goes on, he gets rid of all of his partners because, you know, he needs to make that money. And in the end, that's his downfall. That's all I think I wanted to talk about today. I didn't talk about Narco Season 3 because, I don't know, uh, I didn't see Gilbert... Gilbert <laughs> can't even say his name. I'm not, I'm not Spanish, you know. Gilberto, Gilber, Gilberto and uh, other guy. I forget his name, too. I didn't really see the Cali guys as much of a threat and or polarizing characters as, say, Pablo or Miguel. Just because, well, they came off like the high of season two with Pablo and Pablo is just a pol such a polarizing character. Oh, the, the actor for Pablo is just so good. But they just weren't as polarizing. They're just like, oh, these guys have power. And it's just kind of like, it, it focused more on Pena. And I didn't talk about the DEA agents because that's like, there's two sides of the story with Narcos, you know? And I didn't talk about those either. I just kind of want to talk about the anti-heroes of both stories. And I mean, I've kind of just ranted. I just kind of went in a circle, but... <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is I didn't really focus on the, uh, the Cali guys just because I didn't think that they were really anti-heroes. They were just kind of just villains. They weren't really... There's nothing really special about them, just some weird quirks. But obviously, they both died in the end or both pretty much <laughs> failed in the end because they weren't... Uh, what's the good word to describe? They weren't really good or there was no like it's like when you're looking at the cali guys it's not like you were like uh i i like them i'm sympathizing with them you're like no that wasn't the case with them it was more so uh i want pena to catch him that kind of thing but yeah well uh thanks for watching my immense rant if you've if you've gotten through it no not a lot of people will see this but I just kind of wanted to vent. I've been in a bit of a stage of immense burnout just because I've spent all of my time on see if that stupid Sea of Thieves video. So I just kind of wanted to rant and see if I could, I don't know, restart the whole content drag thing. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, maybe I'll do another one of these soon. Later.